This episode is sponsored by Shutterstock.com. With over 20 million high-quality stock photos, illustrations, vectors, and video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 30% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use offer code GAMEBREAKER6. This episode is also brought to you by Audible. For a free 30-day trial and to receive a free audiobook, just head on over to audible.com slash GameBreaker. GameBreaker TV. Hey guys, you're watching GameBreaker TV. My name is Troy Blackburn, and today we have a very special guest joining us from ArenaNet and Guild Wars 2 is Mr. Chris Whiteside. He is the studio design director for Guild Wars 2. Hey, Chris, thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you uh, very much for having me. I'm a big fan of your work, and a uh, big shout out to everyone that uh, supports uh, Guild Wars 2 and our great team. Oh, we definitely love Guild Wars 2 here at Game Breaker. Now, now, first off, if you don't mind, tell us a little bit about what exactly it is you do as the Guild Wars 2 studio design director. So um, I'm responsible for the, uh, the health um, and uh, you know the management of the uh, design team, uh, game director team. Uh, you know, on top of that, I'm also responsible, ultimately responsible for uh, the quality of the content that comes out of the studio. Um, and yeah, uh, um, yeah, and that's, it's uh, uh, it's uh, a big job, and I don't think yeah, I have time to go into all of these. I can I can only imagine. So so tell us about the living world philosophy of Guild Wars Two. What what was it that your team set out to do when they were designing your plans for the living living story in Guild Wars 2? So, uh, yeah, I don't think it's, I think everyone who knows the reading that knows that we're not uh, we're we're not shy of uh, a challenge, um, and that we're always looking for the next opportunity, and we really want to pioneer. And so, you know, uh, we decided quite a while ago that uh, we really wanted to get a better understanding of what uh, a living world truly is. You know, we believe that. Uh, that's the future for online worlds. We believe that it, it'll make it, you know, online worlds more relevant um, and uh, and exciting um, and collaborative in terms of uh, us working with the community and so on. Um, and so we kind of, you know, many 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 people have talked about uh, the you know the terminology of living world, and we really needed to, uh, you know, we spent time working out exactly what that meant to us. And for us, that means uh, an evolving world, um, the yeah, persistently evolving world. Uh, you know where you know the heroes of Syria, the players themselves, are um, part of uh, you know the law and and how the world moves forward and so on. Um, and then you know we actually got down to uh, the basics and looking into what was actually required and and very quickly came understood some of the huge uh, kind of uh, constraints and and uh, issues that we would face around that. You know the two main ones being um, we had to in order to pull this off we had to basically split. Uh, the team into four separate groups, um, uh, each of those being a living world team. Uh, and then also, you know, we have to look at uh, reworking our technology, which the guys did a great job on, to ensure that uh, the teams could work um, all at the same time, but without uh, clobbering their work in essentially in streams. And that would allow us to rotate the teams to be able to get the, the two-week cadence. Um, and the reason we've been very kind of quiet about this is um, because a lot of people in the past have spoken about uh, achieving living world, um, we really wanted to basically prove it out ourselves before really talking to everyone about it to make sure that it was actually you know, proven and that we could do it. Um, and so that's uh, where we are now, and that's, uh, we're all very excited to be to be able to. I think in our second event now, we um, Cadence, and, um, and to be able to talk about that and uh, really connect uh, with the community in regards to what this means moving forward and so on, and how we're all going to uh, basically, uh, you know, all part of building worlds together. So, so you guys have recently kind of started cranking out content at a cadence of like every two weeks. How did you come to the conclusion that that was going to be a good time frame for you to be able to produce new content that often? Um, I think that, you know, it's part, of, it's part of what we think makes a living world. I think in order to, to really have that, um, you need to basically, uh, you know, almost evolve the world in real time. You know, we have a really good example of it, not in the digital space, but in the world around us. Um, you know, when things happen in the world and hotspots and uh, and all the different events that are uh, happening around there, we really wanted to, um, you know, kind of knock it out of the park in terms of uh, ensuring that 
there was always something going on, that there was always kind of uh, forward momentum and evolution. Um, and at the same time, you know, mystery around uh, what's coming, uh, you know, next and so on. So really, uh, a two-week cadence is uh, pretty good in terms of real-time evolution. So, so where do the ideas for the for the living story come from? Is it a group effort, or are there like a, just a handful of people who develop those ideas? How do those ideas get started? So, um, basically, we have a plan, a themic plan, for uh, quite a long time uh, from now, in which we have you know high level ideas um, and focus for each of the releases that uh, are part of uh, an arc that can be dipped uh, in and out of, but is certainly connected. Um, in one, we have that in a. So basically what we do is when a team uh, is ready to begin on another event, for example, um, they're allowed to work uh, within that team and pretty much do uh, whatever that what they want, which is awesome, right? You know, developing being in a candy store. Um, but in terms of actual, actual, you know, the, the, the depth and the nuts and bolts of each release, you know, the designers, the writers, the whole team um, uh, works with, together to brainstorm what could the gameplay be, you know, what's special about it, what's GW, you know, what's Guild Wars 2 about what we're doing? You know, Daniel uh, Joe Chu and his amazing concept team then uh, put pen to paper and start uh, building out the world visually. Um, and obviously that gets uh, the team very excited. Um, and it kind of goes from there. And then it, it's pretty much kind of normal development from that point um, with a lot of balancing and a lot of review. Um, so that's, that's how we do it. Now, now does, the, does the in-game story team have any sort of interaction at all with the authors of the Guild Wars 2 novels. Obviously, the new book, Sea of Sorrows, that released earlier this week is a, is a story that takes place really before the time of Guild Wars 2 itself. But there are some obvious tie-ins to the existing City of Lions Arch. And without getting into specifics about upcoming things that you obviously can't talk about, how much does the in-game living story team coordinate with story writers outside of the actual game? They absolutely coordinate, uh, you know, with uh, Reed and Jeff and um, and the uh, the narrative writers, and also. You know, we uh, we very much uh, are working, and I think we're doing a lot better now in terms of synergizing the gameplay uh, and narrative. So it's been a key focus for us. And if you look at our first release, Flame and Frost, um, and then you basically look towards uh, uh, what you know how far we've come now, uh, you'll see that it's kind of a lot more interactive, uh, and not a lot more synergized uh, and intertwined. Yeah, they work closely together. Good. Uh, can you give us a sort of behind the scenes of the kind of the effort it takes to get the design team to get new content ready and live every two weeks? And what kind of time frame, like from when an idea is generated to when it goes live, what kind of time frame is that? typically? So it depends. And obviously we're getting better at what we're doing uh, all the time. And that's why the content is getting deeper um, uh, and more sophisticated. And as we uh, come across issues and so on, uh, we work to resolve those. And obviously we're listening to community all the time. You know, personally, I read a number of forums um, every day, you know, twice a day, uh, and we discuss uh, the opinions and points there. Uh, in regard to the timing of the teams, this is one of the reasons why it's such a, a complex and monumental task, is that the, the teams individually actually get quite a lot of time. Um, it varies, but we're talking months, not weeks, uh, in terms of building out the content. Um, and so basically what they do is they, we, we, we spun up the teams um, with uh, a separation in between each of, uh, each of them spinning up, which meant that we could uh, rotate them. Um, so even though the content's coming out every two weeks, there's been months of work uh, with, every, with every event. Um, in terms of actually, you know, from ideation to uh, completion, um, again, it depends on the amount of time we have, but the kind of process involved in that is, you know, brainstorming, getting specialists in to work out in terms of specialists from either base camp or, or the teams themselves to work out how long they think things are going to take to do, uh, what are the most efficient ways of doing it and the best ways. You know, we're always looking at quality. Um, and then you know, we get to the point where we have our first playable, uh, which can be bare bones, um, and we're really looking for the fun factor at that point. Um, and we look at review, and then we begin balancing and iterating uh, and building from there. Uh, and then basically, um, you know, it's, it's very high pressure, but, uh, you know, uh, when we're ready to release, then uh, we're, we build in enough time and we release. Now, as you said, you, you keep a close eye on the community and how they feel and kind of what's going on there. And how do you feel, 
just from your perspective, how do you think the community feels regarding some of the recent updates and especially the the kind of the temporary dungeons that kind of come and are gone versus wanting maybe some more permanent content? So uh, I'll start on, on your second question. You know, I think that we've done a, a, a very good job um, in terms of uh, persistent content in the game already, you know, since launch. The cadence has still been uh, rapid, uh, specifically, you know, uh, work on dungeon, fractal, uh, rewards, uh, uh, map revamp, uh, and so on. And, you know, we're committed to that. That said, uh, getting the living world up and running hasn't been an easy task. Um, and now that we're in the position where we have the platform and we're ready to move forward with it, um, you know, we're very much concentrated on more balanced development moving forward. So I think that part of the problem has been that we made the decision not to go public in regards to what we were doing uh, because we didn't want to, uh, you know, we didn't want to let anyone down in that respect. And I think that moving forward, you know, balanced development is key for world v world, PvP, um, and PvE. Uh, and we will, you know, whilst I don't want to talk about um, work that we're, we're doing, which we, we're, you know, for example, which we're not necessarily confident about now, for the same reason as not disclosing everything about living world, you know, we are basically going to continue to uh, put out consistent content, such as, uh, you know, we're going to be continue to work on the fractals, open world bosses, dungeons, balance reviews, rewards, progression, um, and we have some very, very cool stuff coming. But really, uh, the, the jewel in the crown of, uh, of the platform we've built is actually the speed of the, the, the release cadence, in that, you know, many people talk about how working in a live environment is so beneficial to a development team because you're getting almost like real-time feedback. You know, if you're thinking that we're doing a two-week uh, release cadence, then our feedback is, uh, you know, the feedback return is un unparalleled in terms of, you know, um, being able to collaborate with the community um, and build uh, the world together as we move forward. So that's uh, very advantageous to us, um, and hopefully it's going to really allow for, um, you know, a new chapter in synergy between um, uh, a development team and its community. Regarding overall, uh, I think there's definitely been a box of unknowing in terms of what we've been doing and people speculating, but certainly uh, over the past three weeks reading the forums, people are starting to put uh, the pieces together, and now that we're, we're, we're basically discussing it uh, uh, with everyone, I think uh, it's going to be inter interesting to see uh, people's thoughts, and I hope it's going to be really exciting in terms of um, you know, all of us working together on the platform to really push this this space forward um, and redefine what it means to be to, to be uh, not just make an online world, but to be um, you know a, a person inside it. Based on uh, the development process so far of the Living Story and Guild Wars Two itself, are there any hard lessons that you've learned and, and kind of grown from along the way that just really come to mind? Many, 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 many. Uh, gosh, wow, it's, you know, that's, uh, that's, just, there's just so many, um, you know, we're constantly, we're, we can't, we have a really, really good collaborative, uh, culture at work, you know, every time we see uh, a problem comes up, we see it as an opportunity. I think that, um, you know, I think it's important that we're, we, we remain, um, you know, uh, uh, gameplay driven and have a good uh, synergy with uh, narrative. I think we've, we've overcome uh, a lot of technical issues and um, best working practices issues within the studio. But I guess I'll turn, I'll turn uh, the question around a little bit in that it's extremely exciting to be um, in a position where we're, we're pioneering and we can't, you know, in terms of where we're going thematically, obviously we have a plan, but in terms of the potential of what we're doing, uh, we're forging ahead, and you know that means that we're building the road as we go along. Um, and so that's maybe uh, you can either see it as a huge issue or a huge opportunity. It's certainly high pressure, but at the same time, it's very exciting. And I don't think we would be uh, wanting to do anything else. But really, you know, in terms of our learnings as we go through, um, you know, since launch, there have been many, many, many of them, and uh, I can't really hone in on one that. Um, you know, like I said, it's like a, a wall. Um, yeah, there's just too many. Yeah. So, so looking forward now, you've got some information about the next update coming to Guild Wars 2. It's uh, due out July 9th, and it's going to be called Sky Sanctum. Uh, what have you got in store for players in this update? 
So this is really cool. I mean, one of the things I really love about the Living World release is the variety, um, you know, the difference and the variety between the events, you know, and some of the events you're kind of going half leather and, and be, you know, beating everyone up. And then you have Dragon Bash and it's the festival and it's all a little bit more laid back and fun uh, in terms of, you know, more jovial. And then halfway through that, these zoned um, Aether Blades come in and, and start messing up your party. Um, and with uh, the next release, uh, we really wanted to kind of like, uh, you know, add more to the world and so on. And so um, what we see with this is, is a huge floating city that um, basically flies across the world of Syria and stops the trade with, uh, you know, cities like Lion's Arch and, and so on. Um, and so you get a chance to see another, uh, you know, another dimension uh, of the game, essentially. Um, and it's very much, uh, kind of the theme is very much air and elemental. And so there's some really fun uh, uh, activities that the players can do in terms of uh, free movement around environments. Uh, and so on, and of course, um, the arc of the the story, which I'm not going to go into specifically, uh, it's, it it gets even more hot than it is now, uh, and you'll see uh, things that have happened in the past begin to be interweave into the gameplay. Um, so you know, I really like it, uh, and from a personal note, I also like the fact that you know, the city's in the sky, and it adds even more kind of like physical and geographical depth to the world. Um, and so yeah, really excited about that. So, so this is a kind of an extension of the story that we've been living through for the past few weeks then? Um, uh, well, yeah, we'll have to wait and see. But um, it's, a, it's a living world, right? So, yes. yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, and maybe even looking further ahead than that, are there any other teases or anything special you want to you, you share with us? I, I heard that possibly there was some ideas about in, some new in-game type content. Ah, uh, yeah, you of course put me on the spot with that. Um, I had I had to one time, one time. You know, I mean, I I, I was very I had a really good conversation in game. I do this frequently. Um, you know, I think this conversation lasted three hours. I think we co we covered maybe a hundred different topics. Um, uh, my myself, you know, I'm very interested in end game content. Uh, I, I'm very excited about the potential that uh, Guild Wars Two. Um, has and the, the you know the the take that we would have on this, um, but in keeping with making sure that you know we're we're um, confident about what we're doing, um, and that you know we I want to you know under promise and kind of over deliver, um, you know you'll just have to wait and see in regard to that. And thanks for putting me on the spot. And <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you guys have done a great job, and Guild Wars Two is a spectacular game, and. Thank you very much for joining us today, and uh, hopefully we can do this again sometime. Thank you so much for your support as well and to the community for uh, being so much fun to play with um, and being so uh, supportive of us. Um, and, you know, uh, I really look forward to um, how we're going what, to what, how we're gonna evolve Tyria and how we're going to build this world out uh, together and the huge potential that we now have in this platform uh, of the living world. Keep your feedback coming. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll do our best to, uh, to continue to, uh, to make a, a great online world and um, uh, a really fun place to be. Well, guys, if you haven't checked out Guild Wars 2, there, there's never been a better time to do it. There's tons of content out there. And as you can tell, there's tons of new content, living story coming. So definitely check that out. And stay tuned right here to Game Breaker TV. We're going to have all kinds of information, news articles, and Guildcast talking about all the stuff coming up in Guild Wars 2. Uh, thanks, Chris. We'll see you next time. Thank you very much.